pen, get a pad of paper, and sit down and get ready to have a Bible study with me, Evangelist Len Paxton. I love you, and I look forward to you in the Bible study. The telecast this week. Uh, I want to start this telecast off by reading you something uh, that I wrote uh, on May the 27th, 2002. And um, today we're going to talk about trials and severe testings that comes in the life of every believer. And I want to, I want to start by saying that every one of us uh, that names the name of Jesus will experience testings, trials, tribulations. Just because we're born again, that does not make us exempt from the issues of life. And I, I want to start the program by reading uh, uh, just a little something that I wrote. One of the most difficult and trying things about going through severe testings and trials are those moments when God is silent, quote unquote. He is always there, for that is his promise but sometimes we cannot feel his presence or hear his voice. It is during those silent times that we must learn to walk by faith. Beloved, always remember that God's silence is for his purposes. And he is always, God is always working on the behalf of his children. Often we do not know and are not aware of the mighty and miraculous things that God is doing for us during these silent times. God's silence does not indicate his absence. And God's delays are not denials. If we allow the Holy Spirit to train our inner ear, even during the silent, quote unquote, times, we can hear the echo of what God has spoken to us before. And this is enough for faith to feed on. Amen? I wanted to share that with you. Uh, how many of you out there have ever felt before like, I mean, man, I'm just really going through some rough, rough times, and where is God? God is silent. And the, the, the thing that the Holy Spirit gave him to me in my heart was that we don't know what God's doing on our behalf, but he is working. He never leaves us alone. He never forsakes us in our times of trial. I don't know what your trial may be if you even have one, those of you that are watching me over television. I mean, it might be a family difficulty. It could be the, the sickness or even the death of a, lo of a loved one. It could be the loss of a job. It could be half a thousand things and... It seems like we're doing all we know to do sometimes, but we can't hear God. Have you ever been there? Well, I want to tell you something. If you haven't been there, there's a very, very good possibility that you will be one day. And today I just want to talk to you about a, a, just a few, and uh, you know, a few of God's purposes. Uh, for the trials and the severe testings that come into our lives. And no one knows all the answers. No one knows the entirety of God's purpose in that area. It seems like, you know, the world would think, well, uh, if, if you're living for God the way that you ought to be, if you're faithful to the Lord, if you're doing uh, everything you know from this book, to do what is right, then you wouldn't have these problems. Now that's the way it would seem to the world, but that's not the way it is. 
Sometimes, I don't know if you've ever asked yourself this question or not, but it seems like uh, wicked people who are involved in, in terrible sin, and they're just going on with life as usual, and the righteous suffer. Why is that? And of course, in a 30-minute broadcast, we can't answer that question. But I have just come through my own self personally, one of the severest times of testing in my life, one of the deepest, uh, uh, severest seasons of my faith being proved that I've never been in before. And I have learned a couple of things, and that's what I want to share with you tonight. Now, I'm reading from the New American Standard Version of the Bible, and I'm reading from the book of First Peter, and I'm going to begin with verse 3 and read down through verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance, hallelujah, which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, and it's reserved in heaven for you. You who are protected, now, now notice this verse, you are protected by the power of God through faith. When you're going through a time of testing and a time of trial in your life, when you don't have answers as to what in the world is going on, you can know that as a child of God, you are protected by the Lord. You're protected. You're kept through faith. And when I say faith, I'm talking about properly placed faith. Faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Not faith in, in our abilities, not faith in our work, not faith in our goodness, or anything of that nature, for that's not faith. But what Jesus did at Calvary, because of the cross, you and I, even in the deepest and darkest valleys of our lives, we are protected by God. And I want to tell you something today, and it's good gospel news, that no matter what you're going through, no matter how dark it looks, no devil in hell can snatch you out of God's hand, praise God. If you want that protection of God, if you want to keep serving the Lord, if you want, and, and, and I'll tell you this, if you'll persevere through that time of trial, if you'll stand the test, if you'll endure to the end, you shall be saved. Amen? Satan cannot steal your faith. Praise God. Not if you keep it anchored in the cross. Praise the Lord. I mean, he can put the pressure on. He can bring the test. He can bring the trial. He can bring the tribulation. But he can't steal your faith. He, Satan cannot steal your eternal soul. You keep your faith anchored in the finished work of Christ upon the cross. And you are protected by the power of God. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. You are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice. And you know something that's so very different uh, between the early church and the church of today? Is that these saints of God, Peter, Paul, James, John, uh, countless others throughout the ages, they knew what it was to suffer. And they understood the truth that the eternal reward is more important than the here and now. Do you realize? Well, just pick up Fox's Book of Martyrs and read the terrible, terrible uh, happenings that took place against Christians all through the 
ages of time. And these men say, you, you greatly rejoice in your inheritance. You great, even if you're in a dungeon, even Paul, great apostle of God, though your head is on a chopping block, you greatly rejoice because of your salvation. Because of your salvation. Oh, hallelujah. I wish the church would get back to preaching that the most important thing that you got going for you, child of God, is your salvation. It's not how big a car do you drive? How fancy of a house do you live in? How much money is in your bank account? That's not it. We rejoice because we're saved. Praise the Lord. We rejoice because our names are written down in the Lamb's book of life. We're born again. We have a, a spiritual inheritance from God. And that will see us through the darkest of trials, the darkest of testings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I want the devil to know, devil, you did not defeat Len Paxton. Praise God. Devil, you have not defeated the church. Glory be to God. Devil, you have not won. Hallelujah. Because we have held on to the cross of Christ through thick and through thin, enduring to the end. How many of you out there today, right now, maybe one of your friends or your relatives has a, a cancer that's attacking their body. They've got a sorrow in their life. Maybe they've went through a divorce. Maybe there's been terrible financial reverses in your life. My good God Almighty, hold on to the cross of Jesus Christ and rejoice in your salvation. If you'll force yourself into that mindset. Praise God, no devil in hell can touch you then. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I know what I'm talking about. I know of what I speak. Glory be to God. We have salvation, people. We are pilgrims and strangers upon this earth. But we have the promise of God that there's a better place awaiting us. You hear me today? In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith, I like that, the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found that your, your faith tested <coughs> may be found to result in praise, hallelujah, and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen Him, you love Him. And though you do not see Him now, but believe in Him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful inheritance that we have in Christ. And in those times when God seems to be silent in your life, and you don't know what in the world's going on, and sometimes we're even tempted to cry out, God, it's not fair. There are some things that we can do. I'm going to give you a brief list. I'm going to give you two lists, actually. And you might want to jot these down, excuse me, so that you can, uh, if you're going through a trial, if you're going through a difficulty, if the devil has turned up the heat in your life, the most important thing that you can do is hold fast to Christ. Because I want to tell you something, 
God has a plan for everything you're going through. You might not be able to see it now. You might not understand. It might hurt. But God has a plan. God has a purpose for your life. I don't care who you are. I don't care how bad it looks right now. I don't care how hopeless it seems. God does have a plan for you. God loves you. And if you'll reach out to Him by faith, He'll pull you through. Amen. Your faith will pull you through. Everybody say that right now, right there in your living room. That's fine. Say, my faith will pull me through. Say, my faith in God will pull me through. Hallelujah to the Lamb forever. Now, based on that scripture that I read to you, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 11, here are ten things that we can say when we're going through a trial, when we're going through a test, and we can't seem to hear God. Now, in reality, God may be speaking, and for one reason or another, we might not be picking up on it. We might be in deep distress or whatever. Or maybe God truly is silent, and He's working out your situation unbeknownst to you. But here's ten things based on 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 11, that you can be assured of if you will properly respond to your test and your trial. Number one, you will reaffirm your position in Christ. Amen. Number two, if you properly respond to your tests and your trials, you'll profit from them. You'll profit from them. You'll learn. Amen. Number three, your faith the most precious commodity that you have will be tested and proven during times of trial. Number four, if you properly and correctly respond to the trials of life that come your way, you will learn what is valuable in your life. Number five, your faith will mature. You will learn to trust the Lord in a deeper way. Praise God. And in reality, testings and trials is such a part of our sanctification. Because God wants us to learn how to trust Him. And it is not. It is not an easy thing to learn. Especially when you're hurting and especially when it seems like your world is falling apart. But, you, beloved, you have to remember your faith will mature if you keep reaching out to God. Number six, if I properly respond to the testings and the trials in my life, I will be purified by the Lord. There will be things in my life that should not be there, that God will expose them to me. And if I am properly responding and place my faith in the finished work of Christ upon the cross, the Holy Spirit will remove those things from my life. Praise God. Number seven. If I properly respond to my testings and trials, my faith in Jesus Christ will bring glory and honor to God through my trials. And number eight, I will learn to love God more. Amen? Number nine, if I properly respond to my testings and the, and the trials of life that come my way, I will learn about the faithfulness of God. God is faithful. Even when we are not faithful, God is faithful. And if you're in the valley of despair right now, God is faithful to you. Praise the Lord. He will not leave you comfortless. Sometimes we just 
become so wrapped up in the things that are happening to us that we can't tell what God is doing in us. Hallelujah. But God is working. He's faithful. And number 10, if I properly and correctly respond to the trials that come into my life and the tribulations and the testings that come into my life, my life will become more useful to God. Let me give you an illustration. It's beautiful. From the Bible. Jesus took the bread that symbolizes the fact that he received you and I. Then he blessed the bread that symbolizes the fact that he blesses our life with salvation, with the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 1 verse 3 tells us that we're blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. Many other scriptures. He takes the bread, he blesses the bread, then he breaks the bread. And that breaking is a painful process. It hurts. But after he broke the bread, he gave the bread. Beloved, today, before God can give you or I to the world, before we can really be in Him what we ought to be, we have to be broken. The alabaster box of precious ointment has to be broken before it can be poured out. The things of splendor and glory and beauty that God has placed within our lives, deep within our hearts and our spirits, before it can be released to a world that so desperately needs it, you and I have to be broken. We have to be pliable in God's hands. We cannot depend upon ourselves, and we must totally learn how to trust Him. These are purposes for testings and trials. Now, the, the, these aren't the only purposes, but they are some of the reasons why God allows us to suffer the way we do sometimes, and we can't understand why. Broken and poured out, broken and given to the world, hallelujah, and that's a beautiful thing. There's something inside of each one of you that God wants to get out and give to somebody else. But see, we have walls of pride in us. Or we have walls of temper problems in us. Or we have a half a thousand things that stop us. Maybe we're too busy to get involved in the things of God like the Lord wants us to. And that stops the beauty and the preciousness from flowing out of us to a world that so desperately needs it. And so there comes a breaking. But that breaking is beautiful. It hurts at the time. It's very, very painful. But it's the only way that we can become more useful to God. Amen. So when we're going through a trial or test, and please understand, in a, in a 30 minute program, I've only covered the base, the basics of this one area. We, we can't teach, you know, there's sometimes that we bring uh, <laughs> trials and tests on ourselves because of our stupidity. And there's times when other people attack us. And that's all part of this too, really. You have to remember that God is sovereign and nothing comes into our lives that God does not either cause or allow to happen to us. And our position must be to keep our faith anchored in the cross of Calvary and learn what God is trying to teach us from that trial. Now I know this flies right in the face of today's modern gospel, but this is the Bible truth anyway. God takes everything that we go through, everything that we experience, if we'll let Him, He'll take it and use it for our good if we yield 
But let, let, me, let me say it this way. If we'll place our faith in the finished work of Christ upon the cross, then God will send the power of the Holy Spirit to help us in our lives. And it will work out. And it will come out in the end for good. Amen? Let me give you one more quick list. I'm running out of time. Where does the time go? Praise God. When life doesn't go like it's supposed to go, try these simple little keys to stay on track until your circumstances can turn back around. Number one, resist the devil. And, and let me, uh, let me um, tell you that part of resisting the devil is resisting murmuring and complaining about the position that you're in. Okay? Resist the devil and draw close to God. Draw as close to God as you can. Keep your faith in the cross of Christ and the work that He there finished. Number two, when you're going through your testings and trials and when you don't think life is treating you fairly, avoid the blame game. It's The blame game will sidetrack you from the one who can really help you. Look at uh, the book of Job, uh, chapter 40, and verse 8. <coughs> Number three, when you're going through a situation that's, that's tough and you don't think God's being fair to you, and you're, you're being tested and tried, you're being attacked or whatever the problem is, don't try to figure everything out. When you do that, oftentimes you'll find more questions than you do answers. And look at, at uh, Job uh, chapters 38 through chapter 49. That's a bunch of reading there, but it'll do you good. Also, don't confuse temporary circumstances with what lasts for eternity. And this is a big scripture, 2 Corinthians 4.18. Remember that you are a person growing in God. Psalm 84.5. And God's love for you is endless. Hallelujah. Stay strong in faith. Meditate on Hebrews 11 and Romans chapter 4, verses 16 through 25, as you're going through this time of testing. Continually reminisce. Oh, there's great power in reminiscing. Continually reminisce about God's goodness towards you and all of the wonderful things He's done for you in the past in your life. It'll help you get through that trial you're going through right now. Amen? Can I have a word of prayer with you? Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that you bless this television audience. Father, I ask that you bring deliverance by your mighty power to everyone under the sound of my voice. Right now, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord God, use what they are going through, Father, for your glory today. And we ask it in Jesus' mighty name, and the people would say, Amen and Amen.